So in this video here, we're going to do optic tracking with YOLO v5. So we're going to have a YOLO v5 model running for optic detection. And then we're going to use the deep sort algorithm to do tracking of those detected optics. So this is actually like a really cool video, like in previous videos, we've been talking about like how we can do optic detection and so on. But now we're going to add tracking um, on top of our optic detector, because when we're detecting optics, we're just doing it from frame to frame. So we just pass in a frame to our model, we get a detection out, and then we just get the detections out. So if we're not doing detections, if we're, for example, like running on a live webcam, uh, then maybe we'll miss some detections from frame to frame. But if we have a tracker, we can actually like track our bounding boxes and our detections over time. And then we can actually like keep track of our optics, even though we lose detections uh, from frame to frame. So if we're, for example, like running uh, 30 frames per second and we have a couple of frames where we miss our detection because we have some occlusions or we just doesn't detect it in the model or if it's not larger than our threshold the confidence score uh, then we might lose track and then we'll just lose track of the optic completely where if you're using a tracker we can actually like track the exact same optic we can assign an id to that object and then we can track it over a number of frames and then we can play around with some parameters and so on but first of all, remember to subscribe button and bell notification on the video here. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here are actually like subscribe to the channel. It's just a single click and it helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. So here we're going to use the YOLO v5 model. I also have a course with the YOLO v7 model. If you want to use that model instead of the YOLO v5, it would actually like be faster to run with the YOLO v7 model and you will also get better performance and also show you how we can actually like deploy it. Then you will get the bounding boxes out and then you can just directly use those uh, detections and, and bounding boxes with the deep sort algorithm here for uh, for tracking your detections in the image. So definitely check that out. I also have courses about how we can use OpenCV with GPU support. So we can actually like improve the speed by by a lot, like up to like 30 times. So if you want to go from like um, like a couple frames per second to almost like 30, 40 frames per second in your algorithm, then you will actually like be able to create real time applications. Here, I'm going to show you a YOLV5 detector running on the GPU, and then we will also use the optic tracker. It will run on the GPU as well. So this is actually going to run really, really fast. We're going to see the results at the end. But here, we're just going to jump straight into the code. We're importing the module. So we're going to use OpenCV, NumPy, uh, Time, and also Torch. So we're going to use PyTorch to actually like load in our YOLO v5 optic detector. Then we have created a class here for the YOLO detector. I have videos about how we actually like initialize this class here and then we created a class in another video. So may definitely like check that out if you want to know more details. Here we're just briefly going to go over it so we can talk about uh, the deep sort tracker afterwards. So here, first of all, we just have our initialization function. We just throw in the model name if you want to do it on a custom optic detector or we can just use the pre-trained one of the pre-trained YOLO model as well. Here we're just going to set the class names. We're going to set CUDA here if it's available or else we're just going to run our model on the CPU. Then we're going to load our model. So we use Torch PyTorch to load our model. Then we go intra inside Ultralytics and then have they have this repository YOLO v5. If we throw in a model name here, it will load the custom optic detector or like the custom YOLO v5 model that you're trained. I have videos about like how we can train your own YOLO v5 model. And again, the course about the YOLO v7 model where we go all over like uh, the architecture of the model, like how does the model work, what are the advantages, and I also go over like the advantages over uh, YOLO v5, so definitely check that out if you're interested, but here you can either like you, you load a custom model or just a pre-trained uh, YOLO v5 model here, and we're going to use the small model of this example here, if no model name here is passed into the function. We can also like have some score frame here, so this is basically the forward pass that we're going to do of our frame. So first of all, we need to resize our frame here to the correct format for YOLO v5. And then we basically just have our model. We have our frame. We pass it into our model. We do a four pass in our model. And then we'll get the results out here at the end. Then we can split up the results here to our coordinates of our bounding box and also the labels uh, for the detections that we're doing. So let's say that we want to detect the person. Then we're throwing out the bounding box or the coordinates of the bounding box uh, around me. And then also a label, which will be the corresponding like class that we're detecting. So that could be, for example, be a person. Then we can also convert a class to label. We can plot the boxes here as well. So if we have greater than some confidence uh, score threshold, then we can actually like both draw or we can actually like just uh, append our detections to a list and then we can return that list, do something else after that. That is what we're going to do in this video here. And then we're going to draw our detections after they have been through our tracker. So here we're basically just taking out the coordinates for the top left corner and the bottom right corner. So we can actually like draw our bounding box with that. We're not going to do that here because we're just going to do it after we're past our detections through our tracker. 
Here we're just going to get the different kind of like format here that we need for our deep sword tracker. So we, here for the deep sword tracker, we actually need the top left corner and then we also need the width and also the height. So this is the format that we need to pass it into. And then here, the fourth item here in a row uh, vector here or like a row vector or mat matrix uh, for our detection. So it will be our confidence score. And then we can also pass out the label for our uh, object that we have detected. And this one here, we're just going to do person, but we can also change these to all the other different kind of like classes that we have inside of the Cogra data set. If you're using your own data set, you will need to go in and do your class labels, initialize initialize your classes yourself, but we can also go in here and do, for example, like cop detection. So you can just do that and then it will detect cops in the image instead. But here we're just going to go with person. Then we're basically just returning the frame and also the detections. So this is the whole Yolovi 5 model detector. Again, you can use uh, a custom model or a pre trained model. You can even go in and use the Yolovi 7 model if you've been through my course. Here we're just going to open up a video capture. So we're going to open up the webcam. First of all, we set the webcam uh, resolution here. So it is 1280 by 720. So this is basically just the resolution of our webcam. We initialize our detector here, which is equal to YOLO detector. The model name is equal to none because we're just going to use a pre-trained model detecting people in the frame. Then we're going to import from our deep sort algorithm here. So basically here we have our uh, deep sort real time. So first of all, you need to install that. So basically we can just go in and pip install it. So here is just pip install. And then we just, just have this deep sort. And then we have this real time one. So here again, my requirements are always satisfied, but you should go in and pip install this deep sort real time module. Then we can just go inside that and import the deep sort tracker. We can then initialize it here. So then you'll actually get a folder over here to the left where it, it basically just stores all these different kind of things. So we have like a Kalman filter, we have like our linear assignment, neural network matching. So we're using the neural network to do the matching, setting up some metrics for like how can we match the detections to each other. So that is uh, why it's called deep sort instead of just the sort algorithm that we have used in another video. We also have the detection class, which is basically just um, initializing the detections with the boundary box class, uh, like class confidence score and so on. We have a tracker and then we also keep track of our tracks so we can actually like go in and set our tracks when we're running our tracker because inside our tracks would actually like be the track boundary boxes from our YOLO detector. Here, first of all, we need to set up some different kind of things. So these are just like default values, like all these values down here are default. I just want to show you like what are the different kind of like parameters that we can initialize our deep sort tracker with. So max age here is probably like one of the most important ones. So this is like how many frames uh, do we allow the loudest tracker here to miss before we just discard that track or that bounding box or detection that we're like detecting and also tracking in the frame. Here we have the N in it, which is basically just the number of detections that we need before we are initializing um, a track or a detection. So basically we're doing, we need to do two detections in two consecutive frames before we're actually like initializing this as an object that we want to track over a number of frames. Then if we miss this object here for five frames, then it will act like delete that track. If we're not losing track within like five frames, you can like tune these values here for your own application. But if we are doing two consecutive, um, two consecutive detections, we will initialize an object every track and then we just track it until we lose uh, track of it for five frames. And then we will act like track it really nicely around in the frame as you're going to see later on when we run the program. We can also set some other different kind of parameters here. We won't really go into details with that. We have some like feature extractor. We have a neural network budget. Uh, we have a metric here for like the matching cosine distance that we can set up and also the non-maximum suppression overlap uh, function value here as well. You can play around with that for your own application, but the most important ones are the max H and the N in it. So here basically we can just go down and again, we can open up our webcam. So now we're basically just going to open up our webcam. Um, here we're going to read in a frame from a webcam. We start a timer so we can time how many frames per second that we actually like get with running this YOLO update detector plus tracking the resume updates around with the deep sort algorithm. So here we're basically just going to do a detection. We just have our detector dot score frame. We pass in the image, we do a forward pass and then we get the results out. So this will be the results. Then here we can call this detector dot plot boxes. We have our results, we have our image and then we basically just pass in the height and the width here and also the confidence score. 
uh, so we can actually like um, rescale our image we can set in the confidence score so if it's above a confidence score we will actually like save our detections and then at the end here we're basically just returning our detections and also the image we're not doing anything with the image right now but you could actually like go in and draw the detections you can maybe draw the detections in one color and then detract objects in another color and then you can see uh, the performance and compare like how does the optic detector work with and without the tracker so basically here we just have our predictions then we can just pass that into our optic tracker so this will be our tracks that it returns so basically here we have an optic tracker we hit dot up update tracks then we throw in the detections and we also throw in the image here we can see that the bounding box expects to be in a list of detections so then we can basically just see here that in each tuple we have this left left top corner we have the width and the height we have the confidence score and the detection class so this is basically just the format that we need our detections to be in when we throw it into our update uh, update tracks here if you just go inside this function here it acts like calls all the different kind of like algorithms within deep sort it uses the calman filter and so on first of all we need to do some um, embeddings of our detections uh, and so on we do non-maxima suppression so that is what we're doing here then we update our tracker before we update our tracker we actually like running this prediction step in our calman filter and then after we have predicted uh, our tracks we will actually like hit run, uh, hit, uh, run this update so if we don't have any detections it will just do this prediction state and then we will actually like just use the track from our act like calman filter that is tracking the objects but if we have some good uh, if we have actually like have some good detections that we want to use in our tracker we will actually like update our tracker here with our detections and then we just have this loop going over and over again where we just do a prediction step and an update state uh, update sta state and step for our calman filter and then basically the calman filter just tracks these detections and bounding boxes over a number of frames so that's basically like the idea behind deep sword uh, it's basically just this sorting algorithm running like Kalman filter under the hood and then we use some like deep learning metrics to actually like, keep track of the matches how we actually like matching the bounding boxes and detections which with each other so basically here it just returns the track so this will be all the tracked bounding boxes from our detections then we just have a for loop running through all the tracks we get the track id and then we also get the, uh, the bounding boxes here so then we just convert our ltrp to our bounding box so this will be our top left corner and the right bottom like the bottom right corner then we can just draw a rectangle and also put the text so we're going to draw a bounding box around that with ohms v on our image and we're also going to put the id on top of our bounding box because right now we're not just doing detections we're also doing like tracking so we need to keep track of specific objects so if you just have a bounding box and we just like have a detection here miss a couple of frames we have a detection here we can't really keep track of the id we don't really know like what is the exact id so this is more like tracking optics around than just doing like object tracking and getting some some values of where the object in this single frame here so again we plot our bounding box and we also plot our id on top of our bounding box so we can keep track of the correct bounding box you can also use that for like indexing different kind of like bounding boxes if you know want to know like how's people moving in the frame then you need act then you actually need to keep track of the id also if you're tracking some vehicles if you have like some attendance system or s something like that then you can actually like have an id or just want to know like how are people moving in the frame we end our timer here and then we just calculate the number of frames per second that we get we're just using imshow if it escape on a keyboard we will terminate the program we will release our webcam and destroy all the windows that we have opened up with opencv so now we're going to run the program here and actually like see the results with this update detection and tracker so here it's just opening up the program now we can see the frame here we're detecting one person inside the frame so here we have around like 60 frames per seconds on my gpu and again we assign an id on top of the bounding box so here we just keep track of me we don't lose track of me at all in the frame even though i'm moving around here we lost track you can see for five frames but we should actually like tune that threshold because we're running like 60 frames per second so it's only like a couple of frames that we need to miss before uh, we discard our track but here i'm just going to move around we can see how nicely it acts like tracks me around in the frame you should again fine-tune the different kind of values we can also try with another um with another class here just to see how it works if we're just moving the cameras around instead uh, so basically here we're just going to go up and change that to a cup 
and then we're just going to hit save and now we're going to run the program again i'll take the webcam down so we can actually like track a cup here instead so here we can see the detections for the cup class this is actually like a glass but it's under uh, the cup class as well but here we can see it just keeps track of it really nicely even though we move it around here we lost track of it so this is a glass this is really hard to actually like track around in the image frame um, because again this is not really as good as just a cup so here we can see we keep track of it it is id 19 even though i move the camera around here again you should trim the threshold values i can take up another cup here again we just snap on it directly we can move the camera around we still keep track of the object so again this is a really nice object detector and a really nice tracker it can be used for a lot of different kind of applications and definitely like if you're using object detection you want to keep track of the ids you want to like get that information as well then it's really good to use the tracker and used in most real life applications because this is just really go cool even though we have some occlusions we can even still like keep track of it you can see here the cop maybe the detection lost track but we can still act like detected and if you have a static environment and you want to have like for example like occlusion occlusion is coming in front of your camera so maybe like people walking in front of your camera in some kind of like um warehouse environment then you can basically just set up like the maximum a maximum number of images that we can, can that can be missed you can just set that to a really high value and then maybe like even if you have occlusions for a couple of seconds uh they appear in your setup then you can still keep track of your object behind that occlusion or like behind that person walking in front of your camera so this is also one of the advantages of using a tracker together with an object detector if i just take the camera up here we can see that just running this object detector here we run around like 100 30 40 frames per seconds on my gpu and then we're, when we act like doing our tracking we're down to around 70 maybe 80 around 70 frames per seconds but this is still really fast by getting these advantages here off the tracker where we track around the optics in the image frame instead of just doing detections on individual frames so that's pretty much it for this video here guys it has been really cool it, this can be used for a lot of different kind of applications in the real world because often you don't just want detections on individual frames you actually like want to keep track of like where are your optics in the scene so this is really cool for that thank you guys for watching this video here and again remember the subscribe button and bell notification on that video I also have these courses here that you can check out i both have for omcv gpu so how we can actually use omcv gpu we cover some really nice things all the different kind of aspects within omcv gpu support and then also have this course with the yolo v7 model with the architecture how we can train it how we can deploy it with omcv and onnx and pytorch so thank you guys for watching this video here and i'll see you in the next one bye for now